Hi everyone, welcome to another show of Passing It On Generation X. Um, today we are, I have with me Kevin and he's going to actually uh, be my first male uh, chef. So Kevin, welcome to the show and tell me uh, a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you, Michelle. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on your show. Uh, well, my name is Kevin Governor, and uh, I'm formerly from Edgecombe, and uh, I have uh, four, uh, well, three siblings, and uh, we all are cooking in the family. Oh, lovely. Are they girls and boys? Uh, I've got two brothers. Uh, my second brother is named Mervyn Governor, yeah. Okay. And, uh, so he's actually hosting the Christmas show that we have, guys? Yes, exactly. Okay. And uh, so basically, we learned from our mom and dad, uh, which oh, they actually taught us how to cook and we were like uh, like the kids at home do all the housework and the cooking and everything. Okay, so I guess that is why your wife's so proud of you, eh? Because she was mentioning a lot about your cooking last week. Well, I don't know about that. She didn't tell me that. <laughs> okay, so Kev, basically what exactly are you making for us today? Well, we decided to make is fish cake. Yes. Uh, it's something different which uh, is and nothing compared to the one that you buy in the shop because okay. it's the uh, other one you buy in the shop is mm -hmm. uh, like something like uh, is very, uh, I mean, bland, no taste, okay. no spice. So you've to got it. a little bit of extras to add to your mind. Yeah, right. like, uh, but it was not the Indian origination of the fish cake. Mm -hmm. It was uh, like mainly made in, uh, in the 1960s in England, is where uh, they used to do the packaging and distribution of uh, fish. And then eventually, when they had the leftovers, they don't know what to do. All they, all they should do is just fillet it mm -hmm. and just gather all whatever it was the waste mm -hmm. and they should just form it into a cake form uh, when normally you get it like the cupcake or something. Okay. So they decided to call it a fish cake. So but that's how it originated? Yeah. Okay. But now with the Indians, yes. uh, it was so common that we get our forefathers that uh, they used to go to the pub and to the hotel, I mean, uh, like just have a drink or so. Okay. And when you uh, the main call for them was like to have a bite, but what we call it a starter. Oh, okay. Right. So if someone says to me they want to have a bite, it's basically asking me for a starter. Yes. And then, uh, so when they had a bite of uh, the fish cake, it had a good sting and the spice and it like gave them more, uh, I would say, you know what, energy to drink as much as they can. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. And, uh, so I hope we don't have any younger viewers <laughs> watching this, eh? Okay. And then I guess... Uh, Back in the day, it could be one of the guys, one smart guy that took it and went home. Okay. And he could have just said to his wife, no, can you try and make something that is closer to that? Oh, okay. And then from there, it could be the one lucky family that has a fish cake at home. And then you get the visitors and families coming. They want to know what it is. Okay. So that, I, it was just spread around. And then so... Uh, we That's all, how the ball started rolling. Yes. And uh, it was one of the famous, of course, uh, I'll say starter in the family. Okay. Lovely. So um, you're going to show us how we're going to do this? Yes. So guys, I hope you have your pens and papers ready for this little bite that Kevin's actually going to introduce to us, uh, which is the fish cake. So Kev, uh, run us through your ingredients and uh, what you've got laid out here. Okay. Uh, the first thing that, uh, in this bowl here we have is egg, right? Okay. Which we, uh, uh, we first steamed, mm -hmm. right? And but while we're steaming, we're adding uh, the, uh, the ginger and garlic. Oh, okay. So it's basically added onto the Yes, dish. while you're steaming. Oh, right. So now the main reason is that our Indian term, we call it, uh, we don't want to get the, the couchy smell. <laughs> okay. Right? I understand. So that. that's the main reason that we had in the ginger and garlic. Okay. So once uh, the steaming is done, we yes. do the cleaning and we take out every bone from the fish. Okay. Can I just ask you this? Yes. Tin fish. I know a lot of people use tin fish. Can you use tin fish? Well, no, you can. Well, you can. You can. It's, it all depends on to your financial status. All right. Right, uh, mm -hmm. so you can use tin fish, you can use anything else, but you feel it easier. But just that you won't get the same taste. Okay, as right. the one that yeah. you have. Okay, so, uh, so we got the fish, then yes. we got so the crumbs, yes. right, which we're going to head on later, and then mash is, uh, so th uh, the reason why we use the mash is because it's to bind the fish together, okay. right? But the alternative, the for the mash, we can use the bread crumbs, okay. where you, I, I take the crumbs and you, Soak it, right? Mm -hmm. And to let it uh, rest for a while. And then we use egg, the tobacco, and we got green chilies, which I'll say that mm -hmm. can give you the sting, right? Okay. Then we got, uh, I've got a spring onion. Is that uh, shallot? Uh, yes, right? Shallot, okay. And then we got, uh, that called dania, which we normally call it? Coriander. Yes, coriander. Okay. Then we got oil, that's for frying, and mm -hmm. then we got 
Because onion, uh, just give it... Uh, How much of onion do you use? Well, I use one all onion, but all depends what your quantity is on your fish. Okay. So the more uh, that you put of the onion, they give you a better flavor. And in your spice, yeah? Uh, right, okay, in the spice we have is basil, mm -hmm. I've got black pepper, mm -hmm. and I've got thyme. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got mixed up, I've got fish spice, and I've got a little of uh, ginger. So that's just plain ginger powder, guys? Yes. That's all we're using in our and spice. And then we've got so the paprika. Okay, so... Um, why do you use paprika and not chili powder? Well, uh, the main reason is that, uh, I mean, the ladies know that the men are never satisfied with, mm -hmm. the, with the sting. All they do is add it with them not knowing, and then that's what, but that'll wake up the case so they don't get too much of the barbie on the next morning. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Kev, we've heard that you've got a secret ingredient that you add to this fish cake. Are you going to share that with us or not? Well, uh, not why not? <laughs> no, I can't do that. So, because you, as per your wife, uh, she's actually told us that you have the secret ingredient and you don't want to share it with anybody. So, when do I get to see the secret ingredient? Uh, well, you see, they call it as a secret, but for me, it's not a secret. Okay. Because when I tell them, it, it, this is a show and tell. They only want to eat but not see what's been done. Oh, okay. So, that's the secret. It's yeah. Really see what it, you got to focus on you what you do is what you add on, how much you add on, and what spice you use as well. Okay, so basically it's just to have your quantity right. Am I yes, right? Is yes. Okay? okay, great. So catch us as we're going to start with our preparation. Okay. All right, so we're ready to get with our preparation. Um, Kev, do you want to tell us how we're going to get started with this? Okay. Uh, first, we need to put the spice into the bowl, right? We're going to... We can start with the fish spice first. All right. You need to put it about two spoon. So it'll basically vary according to how much of fish you have in your yes. uh, bowl. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the one important thing I need to tell you, Michelle, uh, that you are looking that I'm putting two teaspoon or whatever it is you're yes. putting, right? But the secret is to this is that it all depends what your heart and your mind tells you. Okay. If you can get the smell, you can add in more. If you feel you don't like the smell, you can put in less. Okay. So, being the the chef, that is is a main judgment of your uh, of your senses to your spices. So I guess that's one of your secrets. Yes. Okay, I'm getting it. So, now I'm adding the the black pepper. Okay. Then going to the basil. I'm just adding two of each because okay. of the small quantity, right? right? And then we're gonna add in our ginger. Okay. Right. So ginger just to give you the uh, smell when you so when you're frying. Okay? If if somebody wants to use ginger and garlic here, are they allowed to in this or not? Uh, well, you can, you can, but like as I said, it's all up to you. Oh, okay. If uh, say for example that uh, when you're steaming your fish, mm -hmm. and if you feel that you didn't put enough of the ginger and garlic, and when you go closer to the bowl, and yes. if you feel you can get that smell that comes out and and it irritates you. Yes. So what you do to uh, eliminate the smell? Yes, you got to do is add in more ginger and garlic, okay. so that uh, when you guess it, uh, just take a bite. They don't even complain and say, okay. you know what? We can get that couchy smell. You know the gossip and say <laughs> this couchy, couchy, couchy. Okay, you know what I mean? And then, okay. so once we got that, we just give it a stir. Okay. Right. You got to let your spice dwell with each other, you know what I mean? See, so they got to be very good friends to the fish. Oh, okay. Right? Because as we go forward, we're going to add in the, the onions. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put a little. Okay. Right? Just. Can I give you this next? And then put the shallot. Like, as I said to you, mm -hmm. it all depends how you want to do it, right? Okay. Like, now I've got the green chilies. Mm -hmm. If you hate your marlo, you <laughs> put the whole container. But if you love her, you can just put a little, okay? Kev, it's Christmas. We should share the love, not kill people. No, it's good. You can share the love, you can share the food. But when they go home, they still complain. <laughs> then we're going to add some... Um, Has your mother ever been complaining about your cooking? So, coriander. Uh, no, she can't complain because okay. I'm I'm the best at home, and she right. fights when I cook. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Then we can add in some mash. Right. This is to bind the old uh, ingredient, right? Okay. And then we're gonna put 
uh, egg, which I've got two eggs into the container that matches to the, to the quantity of the fish, right? right? We're done with that. And then just a, a pinch of salt. salt. Okay. And I mean, you have to add in the salt. We don't. And then when you get the cram, you have to look for so the, salt, the salt, huh? Don't yeah. forget the salt. Then, uh, then what we do, we're going to put all together. Mm -hmm. We're going to mix it firm. Yes. So that everything mix evenly. Then, especially uh, when you put in your perito mesh, right? Yes. Make sure you don't get that lumps. You know they say that lumpy, lumpy, lumpy food you get. Do you have to use uh, potatoes or can I yes, use mesh? Yes, yes. Uh, it gives you uh, a very good taste. Potato. Yes. Okay. But okay. if you get, uh, like, I mean, some people say the perito is expensive, right? Mm -hmm. Which, uh, and they get robbed by saying it's a soft cooking perito. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they're not a <laughs> Because they use two and they take the old bag and go to turn it. Okay. So. <laughs> Now, if you got a guess and you can't find the right perito, guys, you can use the bread. As I said, soak the bread, it will do the job. It's just that it's just to bind everything together. Okay, great. Right? You have to come back onto the show and show us something else, because definitely I'm enjoying this. I'm sure you want to use your hands. No, I, uh... Use your hands, it's fine, give me the spoon. No, the hand will come in later. Okay. That's when you have to do the, the magic. Okay, okay. Right? So we're done with it now, and then the next is. Do you we'll put this in the fridge to settle or not? No, 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 no. We are not like the American. American take four eight hours to <laughs> like almost four weeks. Okay. No. So we're gonna work immediately well, with it, this. With us, we got the guests of India that comes. They want to eat immediately. And uninvited guests as well. Yes, you know they say Indian time, Indian time, but they don't carry a watch in their hand. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but you do realize we don't only have Indian viewers watching this, eh? No, that's not. Uh, well, there's no insult. That's true. Right? Okay. All right, so we're ready to go into. Uh, so, what are we going to do now? Mm -hmm. We're going to gather the whole thing into a ball form. Okay. But the main thing is I've got is the uh, is a scale. Okay. Right. So, oh, is you need. Now, guys, I think this. I'm onto the third secret, so this is another secret. Am I right? The scale. Okay. Because if you know you got a guess of 10, yes. so you can measure uh -huh. that how many you can make for your guess. Okay. Because I get people who do, you do a random, they just take and make a ball, make a ball, and they don't know what the, so the kilos are and the grammage, right? Yes. So what are we going to do now is that I, I can get a scale ready. So now, Michelle, now is the time I'm going to use my hands, right? If okay. you don't mind. No, it's perfect. Right? So now we've got a small quantity. I'm going to say we're going to measure to like 80 grams. Okay. So 80 each gram. fish cake is basically going to be 80 grams. 80 grams. Okay. Right? Great. So once we get the ball form, okay. I do have something that, uh, okay, I'll give you the first one, right? The to older eat, folks. To eat or to, to do? So they do it this way. Oh, you mean like making a better? Uh, almost the same. Okay. Almost the same. Okay. You can do it this way, okay. right? This is with the older folks, okay? Right. I mean, then we can uh, the put into the breadcrumbs. Okay. So right? the breadcrumbs basically holds it together. Hold it. Okay. And then we put it back and then we shape it up. And then we get a complete uh, fish, fish cake, cake, right? Okay. But that was the older folks' days, right? Mm -hmm. With us now, we want to make things this is the neat. Next generation, right? Now we want to make it neat. Oh, okay. And we're gonna get it Haiti, right? So now I have something that I think we kept under is that. Uh, okay, let me get this for you. Oh, I call it the a circle compressor. Okay. How do right? I place this? Right. So. All I do is, I put it on the top here, and take a little bit of crumbs. Okay. So I put it onto the plate so mm -hmm. your fish cake doesn't get stuck onto it, right? Then so we this put is it another in. Another secret. Yeah. Okay. So this is for the younger one that who wants to take pride and wants to be like the. And look like it's a perfect fish Yeah, the perfect, the you know, that the round got to be perfect. Okay. When you're eating, it might go round in your mouth, <laughs> not in an odd shape, okay? I mean, okay. I mean, we, yeah, you are laughing, but you get people that are, no, I agree. you know what I mean? I agree. Yeah. Like, for example, you know, when you cook a sheep head. Yes. Yeah, the people look at the jawbone, that's a problem. 
right? The same like with the fish cake, the same. Because why our new generation want to make it nice and firm, they don't want to make it to look exactly to, to the weather like you said so. Okay. So, all we do, we add in the crumbs. Okay, so this is looking better than this one. Yes. So, we just put it there. Oh, that looks lovely. You can see the difference with that yes. now. So, right. So, from there now, mm -hmm. we go at, at directly into the frying pan. Okay. Right? So we're ready to get started with our cooking. Um, as you can see, we've actually put the pan on the stove. We've got it at uh, 160 degrees. Uh, well, that'll be like maybe four or five on your stove, basically. Yes. Okay. So, Kev, um, do we fry this in deep oil, or, or what are we going to do now? Uh, well, we can do it on a deep, uh, deep oil, but uh, you know, due to the cost of living and it, uh, and the cost of oil is too expensive, okay. right? And uh, the disadvantages of it: once you finish the oil. You cannot be used again, oh, okay. so you are wasting. Okay. So it will be safer to use little oil onto a frying pan, but try to use a non-stick uh, frying okay. pan right. that uh, will give you a better advantage, right? Okay. So we can add in a, a little oil. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think is, is it a bit too hot for you? Can we lower the temperature? Yeah, I think we will go a little lower. Right, so we gotta wait for it to get nice and hot. All right. It's good to when you're checking your oil, you gotta put your hand uh, just across. You know why? Oh, so you basically. Yes, yeah, so oh, you can okay. feel the heat okay. because okay. Uh, that uh, that your stove can say the heat is high, but when you take the uh, other substance and put into the frying pan, mm -hmm. it doesn't want to cook immediately. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna find that the oil will be mm -hmm. a uh, will be. Just merging into the product, oh, okay. and then you're gonna find you're not gonna cook. When you take it out, it's gonna be so oily that you're not gonna enjoy it. All right. Right? If we gotta wait for the heat to come up, well, we see like it is increasing by looking at the bubbles as they hot. Okay. While we're waiting for this to basically get hot, tell us: Do you cook at home um, over the weekends for your wife and family? Well, I do on a weekend only because they call it a special weekend. And uh, when Kevin cooks, it's a special weekend. But uh, but for me, it's a pain. You know why? <laughs> they take advantage all the time. Uh, well, in You're actually a blessing to your wife because if your wife's a working uh, uh, mom as well, then it's actually a good thing because then you can help her. Yes, uh, you know what? I love to cook and I love to share, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the way I cook, the way the food tastes. But the thing that you work alone, they're not <laughs> interested. The main reason why they're not interested is because they want you to cook over and over and over. I mean, there's always a full stop, you know what I mean? Did you ever think about the fact that they could love your cooking, so that's why they opt for you to cook rather than the white? Yeah, but then uh, you cannot work for the white man and you can work for the Indian people <laughs> at all. <laughs> okay, is our oil ready to uh, us to fry this? Okay, so now we're going to take the, uh, the fish cake. Yes. And we're going to put it into the frying pan. Okay, is that a bit too hot? Or uh, no, no, is no, it no. Fine? just okay. right, just right. Anyway. So, but then while we're waiting, mm -hmm. we're going to wait for the base to turn brown, right? How long would you leave it um, to fry on the side? Well, you don't have to leave it for too long. Okay. It's number one, that you need to understand that, uh, that your fish has is, is been boiled. That is oh, called okay. pre-cooked. All right. So, there's no need to... Leave it to fry too yes. long. Yes. Okay. That's when you can call it uh, rare. Okay. Right. You don't have to do it well done. All right. You gotta watch as we get, as we toss them over. Okay. So secret number five is basically uh, use your finger when you turning the fish cake so it doesn't break. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're quite good at the secret, eh? I think you're learning, right? <laughs> True. I hope my husband doesn't ask me to make this at all. <laughs> okay. So as we see now, is that. We, we don't have to keep too long into the, to the right. frying pan. Okay. And neither you that you have to have a deep oil. You know oh, I mean? all right, yes. So, so whatever you got, here, I mean, you can fry them as many as you can. And, have, and the most important thing when you fry, mm -hmm. uh, you have done the first batch, right? 
Now, if you know the heat has gone into the product, mm -hmm. you've cooked it well done, then when you take it out, you fail to realize that the oil is cold. Then you're going to give it a few seconds for you oh, to eat, heat up the and case. then you put your next batch on. And then you can have a problem when you're not going to get cooked, and you're going to break into pieces, then okay. you're going to get frustrated, you're going to lose your guests, okay. and you're not going to be the good chef. All right. All right? So, I guess, I guess we're doing well. I mean, now you know why we added all the spices. Can yes. You get, can you get the smell? Yes. Oh, it's actually quite nice. Quite right? Nice. Yes. Now, that's the main reason why I say it's all based on to you when you're adding your spices. Okay. It's for you to get a smell. All right. But uh, trust me, if you've got cyanose, don't try it at all. <laughs> Should I put a bit higher for you? Yes, yes, I think. Yes, uh, just go a bit higher. See, now that where, <coughs> when, the, when the oil takes its place and then you find that the, the uh, product is like quite big into quantity, yes. now it, it cannot maintain the heat. Mm -hmm. You find it starts to lower. Therefore, yes. we have to increase the heat like what you have done right. now and then we're going to find it, it's going to bubble up and then. And then we're going to wait for the next two or three minutes and then to be done with it. Should be done. And the fish cake, uh, it most commonly when you find them into the TV shows or whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? They intend to make it too brown. Yes, yes. And they intend to make it uh, into odd shapes, right? Yes. And you, and you know the good thing about fish cake? You not only you can have it as your starter, right? Mm -hmm. You can be a patty and make a burger. Oh, lovely. So basically a fish burger? Yes. Okay. And if you look at this patty uh, to the one you find on a normal burger patty, you see the size are different. Yes, I do. Right? Okay. So what we are showing the people now is similar to a burger patty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We can use it so it doesn't cause a problem. Okay. So this would be good to actually do before um, you take it out of the oil and then all the oil gets absorbed into the paper towel. Yes. So one good thing about fish cake, mm -hmm. you can use it as many, many ways you can. Okay, okay. You just need to be a bit creative, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. But trust me, when you be very creative, that's when you start to enjoy your cooking. Definitely. I agree. So can I switch this off yes, now? Yes, yes. Okay, guys. So, guys, we're ready for our plating. Um, Kevin, this looks lovely. What exactly? It's like a little boat, hey? Yes, yes. And yes. where would you get this little boat? Well, you can find this in uh, at any food store. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think mainly if you go to, like, into China Mall and... Uh, to find stuff by the way they got all the, uh, the cutlery stuff and okay. home decos and everything. So it basically uh, makes the food look more presentable yes. and um, adds a little difference to it. Yes, you see, uh, the main reason why that I've chosen the boat is because they blend with the fish. Definitely. It's not something Definitely. that uh, Jesus made the fish. You got to think about the guy who caught the fish. Okay, I agree with you. All right, so let's plate this and. Um, okay, uh, we, all we need to do is that. Uh, I will find we got two have done with the lettuce, right? Yes. Uh, we're going to put them uh, together, right? Evenly. Right. There. Okay. The same thing here. So you can put it in the lettuce if you want to. Okay, uh, great. Yes. And, uh, right. Can they use any other garnish um, if they don't want to use lettuce? It's all up to you. Okay. It's all up to you how you want to do it. Okay. Uh, like the main reason why that I use the lettuce is because when you finish uh, have your meal mm -hmm. or your fish cake, uh, and then you decide to have the lettuce at the end, which gives you a better wash down onto your throat. Okay. Right. Because give you the crunch and to say that. Can I cut this or do you want yeah. to? Yeah. Uh, so the main reason that we use. Uh, so the lemon is because is to just sprinkle onto the fish cake. Okay. And, uh, which you know that you Gives it a bit of a tang, I guess. Yes, but you know you get some people say when you eat the fish is cutting, cutting, cutting. Okay, okay. So the lemon is uh, you just take it and you just sprinkle onto them. Right. So it cuts the rawness that you feel. Yes. I mean you know the time that you put into this, but people still complain. So you got to do something perfect for the Definitely, I agree to so, you. So, 
But even though they can have a taste of that, the face will never give you a smile. Huh? So this is what we have. And then you can add in a sauce. Okay. Which so I made it with uh, the tomato sauce and with mayo. It's uh, not, uh, it because that your fish cake has a sting. Yes. So you got something just to smooth down your Okay. Uh, but if you feel they need more uh, flavor, you can add in to the chili. Okay. So basically sauce. like a kind of a dip sort of. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sure. Uh, but you know, uh, that is an option. All right. If you want to. Okay. And uh, this is what we have. Okay, guys. So there we have it. Fish cakes prepared by Kevin. Kevin, I'm sure that Rina will actually, um, or oh, she loves this that you have prepared for her. No, she loved it, but it is that she eat only 100 grams. Okay, so thank you guys for watching us and don't forget to like our Facebook page and also um, tell your friends and your family to subscribe to our YouTube. Don't forget, cooking is love made visible and as you can see, Kevin has actually spread the love by showing us his cooking. Thanks. So take care and be safe guys, this period is getting so busy and God bless you.